caching a data frame in PySpark is a performance, performance automatic technique. technique that stores the data frame data frames content in memory or disk for faster access during the subsequent. While they mention disk is when they use persist, it is possible to disk also. When they use only cache method, this method it is not possible to store in a disk. So that is what it is saying. So this is syntax and the theory we already discussed. Just go jump into practicals. Okay, guys. So don't uh, think this is a, a small thing that I am using try catch. So this is just optional. You can directly use this code. Okay, you can directly use this code, and uh, there's no problem at all. This code directly you can use. But thing is, uh, why I used try catch is if I am getting some uh, issue right, uh, even this uh, this window is not throwing any exception. So I'm getting uh, some issue. Uh, that is why I put this one entirely into try so that it will capture the error. Uh, it will capture the error. It will show here. So for debugging purpose, it is easy. That is why I follow this method. Otherwise, you can directly use this. But please learn this one also. So this is a kind of error handling, right? So team again same data set. If you see same data set, I have created a data frame, and then I have added one column, and then I'm selecting only few columns out of it. What are the columns? I want only user ID, product ID, brand, price, order date. I don't want user session. I don't want event type, or I don't want any um, category type, etc., etc. I want only few. So this is my uh, one data frame. Then we will see account. Uh, what is the account of the data frame? And uh, on top of it, if you see, uh, this is a select DF, right? Select DF. I will use select DF and do some aggregation. What is that aggregation? I will use a user ID group by, and then again, I will find the sum. So use each user, uh, how much purchase they did. It. Okay, that's it. That is my requirement. Here, I did not uh, partition any color, okay? Because if you see, I did not partition anything. I did not partition the, or uh, did not do, uh, we can say bucketing. I did not do anything, okay? So we'll see the performance. So which one is more effective? Okay, now let's go ahead and run this. Creating a data frame from sample CSV. Okay, so it will take a, a couple of time, a couple of minutes. So, are you able to understand this course? Uh, this uh, lines of code. Okay, it's a very basic. We already written this code uh, previous previously. Yes, sir. Is it? Sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So now what we will do is, uh, can anyone tell me? Uh, can anyone tell me? Uh, will it uh, load data into RAM when after running this? Will it load data into RAM? No, it's a lazy one. Until okay. we... there is no action. There is no action here in the statements. There is no action in the statements. That is why. It don't load, so it just create one uh, lineage. Okay, so once once it completes right, what we will do is we will just run an action. Count is an action on this data frame. Then, then once you perform any action, right, it will go and recompute. Okay, then it will it will again read uh, and then it will uh, see all these things. Okay, one by one. Okay, so we will see what will happen. We will see. Uh, in uh, in next uh, few minutes, okay, yeah. So it took uh, one twenty seven. Uh, it's fine. It's just a creation of a uh, DF. It is fine. But now you won't see any data because uh, it is a lazy evolution. Let's let's perform an action on this data frame. Okay, selected underscore DF dot com is one more data frame. Let's run it. Guys, it will take some time, of course. Um, it won't run on top of this, right? So it will take a little time uh, to perform and uh, will give us the result. It will go and read again uh, from the beginning. See, total number of records are this, right? What we'll do is we will perform a test case one before cache. Let's run this. Simple uh, code here. Yeah. Meanwhile, I can also show you the second test case. If you observe here, 
user id group by user id i just want a total uh, you know users and each user how much they purchased that is the first query result and the second second query result is product based each product uh, sales okay this will give you sales at a product level correct but this is a common select df is common right i am using select df common here also i am using select df and here also i am doing select df okay so what will happen is uh, when you run this right it will go and create again uh, um, see it took almost 51 seconds right now this is created now um, see this this is created just now 1141 and all so we created a one uh, data set right we created one data set this data set will have the the data whatever we just now discussing right so it took 51 seconds now okay i'm stopping here are you able to understand in this thing are you able to understand yes yes Yes, same, same similar query this is a test case too i just want to test it there's a reason why we are doing it. so i'm expecting this also run around 50 seconds uh we will see how much time it will take because this is kind of a same aggregation at a product level okay so uh, it will create a df sum by product now we don't have anything right so it's supposed to create that uh you know folder here once it completes right it will create a folder this folder folder name is this so we will see shortly yeah so it took only 44 seconds or 45 seconds uh, sim okay so now this is before caching we did not do any cache right so how you can check it you can just go to a computer cluster spark here This is a little important. Yeah. This is the query. So it read all. Well, that means it is scanned everything. It scanned everything. And if you go back, we performed count here. And after that, we performed this one also. 51 seconds. This is the first query. If you see the first query, uh, this is the first query. So it, it scanned everything, right? So it scanned and it pulled uh, almost 42 uh, place. And then uh, finally, it pick up uh, 3022290. Okay, this is the first query. And go back and see the second query output. What is the second query? This one is the second query, 42, 44 seconds, right? Uh, this is 166. So, but it read same uh, number of uh, rows and uh, then finally it has given this output. So, in these two cases, it is going and reading again and again, right? So, it is reading entire scan. See here, it is uh, it's, it's doing scan on the entire row thing and uh, pulling all the records. After scanning, it will pulling all the records, correct? So, it is wasting, uh, uh, you know, we can say selected DF is same, right? Selected DF is same, but it is again going back and reading again and again, correct? So this is uh, this step is executing every time. This step, uh, this step is executing every time. Till this uh, every time. Let us say our test case one also executing this. Test case two also executing this. Honestly, we are reading multiple times. How many times we read? We read almost three times. One you are performing count. One you are performing. Uh, Test one, one you are popping, test two. Three times it performed, but it, it scanned the whole data set. That is why it is taking the time, right? What we will do is we will add, we will add cache. We will cache this data frame. We will cache this data frame. Okay. So you know what? Can anyone tell me cache and purpose, uh, cache and persist are transformations or actions? Transformations. Transformations. Lazy evolution. Okay. Okay. Even if I run this, uh, will it cache or can it be still? Uh, not until the action is performed. All right. We will reason this step. I think it ran sometime. 
So let's check whether it is getting cached or not. Okay, guys. So now uh, I'm assuming this got cached. We'll check by going to the UI account statement whether it has the okay, count also it won't show you because uh, when you run count only it will cache right so and count also should run now from the beginning okay let's see here in memory table scan so count uh, first it read all data and cache it whole data see here cache it whole data okay now it cache it now go ahead and run our test case one where the test case one, this is our test case one, right? Earlier it took almost 50 seconds. Now we'll see how much time it will take. How much time it took? 10 minutes, 10, 10, 10 seconds. 50 seconds or 10 seconds is a huge. Yeah. Whether it is useful or not? Yes, very much. Now, actually, this is not uh, the use case. When we have to use cache is, let us say, if this DF, selected DF is utilizing many other, uh, you know, many other aggregations in your query, then it is, this is very much needed to do because uh, here I just ran the count, but I don't do count in real time, right? I directly run this one. But when you run first time, what will happen? Again, it will take 50 seconds, correct, to cache it. But who will get benefited? This second query will get, get, get benefited. Correct or not? Because this, by the time you run the sec second query, uh, second this uh, data frame, then it uses the selected DF, which is cached. Unfortunately, for first case, it won't utilize. Why we got uh, the best performance is because you already run one action before that. That is why you are seeing here otherwise it would it would take in around 50 seconds again then it it would have cached then when you run test case 2 it will give you best performance anyway we'll go ahead and run now test case 2 uh, around 44 seconds it took right now we'll see test case 2 how many, how many seconds it will take it will take see 4.3 seconds how fast it is make sense 40, yeah, 45 seconds versus 40 seconds, 4 seconds is huge. So that is the power of cache. Okay, you just go ahead and check all our latest queries. Two queries. See, one query is 9 seconds, one query is 4 seconds, right? If you observe, you may see scan. How many records it read from the disk? Team, how many records it read from the disk? Zero. 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 That means it did not uh, go to a uh, scan level. It did not go to our actual data set directly. Memory from memory only it is reading. See here, number of this. That is why it is so faster. Now go back and see the latest one also. This is the four seconds. Are you able to understand? Here also it did not go to uh, you know actual data set. It directly read from this data. Okay. Now, hope you are able to understand. The last one is how you can unpersist. You can unpersist by using this unpersist method. Now it is unpersist, right? Now uh, what you can do it? Uh, we will run this. How much time it will take? Okay. No more data. Okay. Uh, data is no more in a memory. Okay. Expectation is, is again it is supposed to take a lot of time. Lot of time it's like uh, not uh, the 10 minutes or 10 seconds or 5 seconds. Okay, it should take. See here, the taking already uh, you know more than uh, 10 seconds, right? It already crossed. That means you unpersisted, you cleared the cache. Even if you go and check uh, the uh, plan, it will read from the data set. It, it, it not yet completed, still running, but still we can check it. So this portion is yet to be completed, okay? Till here it's completed. See here, 
it, it's still reading. 31, why you are saying it is still reading? The job not yet got done. So, you see, just now it completed, it took 50 seconds, right? Because there is no cache. Let me just uh, refresh it. This is taken 50 seconds. Now it read all. Again, there is no that uh, records in memory. It read completely from again from the disk. Yes, are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Where did we do that on un uh, caching? Sorry, unpersist. Okay, uh, you can unpersist uh, after completing our steps. Let us say uh, you you completed this second uh, scenario also, right? You can directly write here. Okay, this you can take this, and uh, you think that you completed all your transformations or actions, whatever. Then do the dot. You have to unpersist it. Something like this. Got it? Uh, Naresh, uh, is there any specific drawbacks of uh, persist and cache? I told you right. So if yeah, cache always take a uh, always take a much much higher space than the persist case. Uh, sometimes uh, it depends on the storage level. So let us say cache. I told you right. By default, it is a memory. Okay, which memory? Is it RAM memory? Half memory? Can anyone tell me? Cache uses RAM memory or half heap memory? On heap memory. On heap. On heap memory. If it is on heap memory, is it a deserialized or serialized? Deserialized. Serialized. If it is a deserialized, will it take more memory or less memory? More memory. Now, okay. Okay, this is one way. Now put it aside. Put it aside. Now you are using persist, and you are using persist. Okay. Thank you so much, team. Have a good day. Thank you, Naresh. Thank you, Naresh.